Since when can you get a glass of wine during your haircut? I've been going to the wrong barber this whole time. This is 2020's The Stylist, and we're about to dive into the lives of a psycho stylist. I can't believe I just said that, but if it works, it works. Spoiler alert for those that want to watch this on their own time, links to the film are in the description. Claire goes back to grab Sarah a glass of wine, and when she comes back, she's all set to color Sarah's hair. As she asks questions, Sarah thinks it's a little weird how into her life she is. Sarah talks about how she's away for work on a regular basis, and she thinks her husband and son actually enjoy her being gone. Claire tries to comfort her and reassure her, but she's not as much help as the wine is. When Claire pries a little too far into Sarah's business, Sarah starts to get a little standoffish, but she eventually opens up a little more. After looking around, Sarah realizes that they're the last ones in the shop, and she spills the beans on having a boy toy while she's in town. Sarah tells Claire that she's one of the only ones that knows her secret, and when she explains that it's just because she's a stranger, Claire seems to take that in a different light. What follows is one of the most sensual hair rinses I've ever seen in my life. Granted, it's a stylish way to get through the opening credits, but I never thought I'd be watching a woman rinse another woman's hair so intensely. Look at those camera angles. As the credits come to an end, Sarah drops her glass of wine, and we see that she's passed out. Claire reaches into her drawer and pulls out a curtain that she ends up covering the shop window with. When Claire goes back to Sarah, she pulls out special tools that she uses on Sarah. So much for confiding in her because she's a stranger, and now she's never going to be seen again. Claire's getting as close and personal as she can at this point. Also, what did she drug her with? Her eyes aren't even flickering. Claire proceeds to scalp Sarah, and she puts her new trophy on a mannequin head. Blood covers the floor as Sarah sits in the chair unconscious. Then we cut to Claire walking up the steps to her home. As she enters, she says hello to her puppy and heads down to the cellar of her house. Once down there, she lights candles, and we see that she already has a nice collection of hair and pieces down there. Claire places her new piece on the wardrobe by the mirror, and she starts to cry as she caresses the new piece. She puts her own hair up as she continues to cry, then she places her new piece on top of her own head. As she looks at herself in the mirror, she begins to smile and acts like Sarah. I'll say this is somehow coming across as a whole new level of crazy and we're only 14 minutes in. I'd imagine the rest of the film is only going to get crazier. The next morning, Claire wakes up and goes about her normal routine when she gets a text from her friend Olivia that's having wedding day hair emergencies. As Claire walks down the street, she can't help but be fascinated by the passing strangers and their hair. When she stands in line to get her morning coffee, she notices a small drop of blood is still on her boots, and she gets a little preoccupied trying to cover it up. Finally, she gets her coffee and is on her way. Meanwhile, Olivia tries to reach out again while she's in her bathroom, and it looks like she might have been able to talk to Claire into helping her. Later that day, Olivia makes it to her office where she talks to a co-worker about how Claire might be able to work on her hair for the wedding. As the day continues, Olivia goes about her normal social day with her co-worker, while Claire lives her quiet, solitary life. By evening time, Olivia receives a text from Claire that says she'll do it. Little does Olivia know, Claire's sitting in the road watching her go inside. The next day, Claire watches her fellow stylists handle customers' hair, and she begins daydreaming until Olivia walks through the door. Claire assures Olivia that her hair will be magnificent, and we watch Claire handle Olivia's hair for another long stretch of time. I think the writer of the film might be trying to hint at something they need to get off their chest. Once Claire's done, Olivia can't get enough of it, and she ends up inviting Claire over that night so she can show her the dress. Claire feels a little awkward at first, but she can't help but be giddy at the fact that she's being invited over by one of her closest clients. That night, Claire shows up with a bottle of wine and a whole lot of anxiety. After they toast to Claire, Olivia goes to get her dress on, and Claire makes herself comfortable with some of Olivia's accessories. When Olivia calls out for help, Claire shoves the scarf in her bag and she spots the house key hanging in the kitchen. Claire helps Olivia put the dress on, and she takes a few pictures for her. When she asks Claire to help her take it off, Claire gets a little caught up in the hair on Olivia's head. Once downstairs, Claire asks more about Olivia's personal life, but eventually, Olivia ends up asking about Claire's personal life instead. Claire's a little obvious that she isn't used to being asked these kinds of questions, and the more she answers the questions, the more tragic her backstory becomes. As the night goes on, Olivia reassures Claire that her family would be proud of her, but they're interrupted when Olivia's fiancé, Charlie, comes home. Claire becomes uncomfortable and she leaves. When she gets in the car, she has a breakdown, and it's clear she isn't happy with the way she handled everything. So naturally, she goes and spies on the coffee shop girl. Why is it when characters get too close to their prize prey, they take it out on some other random person that's been nice to them? She couldn't just pick a stranger off the street? It had to be one of the only other nice people in her life? After Claire poisons the coffee girl's drink, she takes hers to go and waits across the street. When coffee girl comes out to take out the trash, Claire's waiting for her as she passes out. Claire drags her inside and lies her down behind the counter. 
She's over here scalping random women like it's the pioneer days. And she gets all worked up when she cuts a little off the planned trail. This is a perfectionist at work, everyone. As she takes a step back, Coffee Girl begins to wake up and question Claire about what's going on. Claire ends up stabbing her repeatedly until she dies. And she deep cleans the entire area. After grabbing supplies from the hardware store to keep people out of her sanctum, she heads back to the cellar where she covers everything and gets ready to lock it up for good. After a good night's sleep, Claire texts Olivia about coming to her bachelorette party, and she seems to be trying to live a normal life now. That night, Claire sees a man come into the salon and asks to put up a flyer for a missing woman in the area, and Claire begins to panic a bit. Yeah, I would too, she already has a bigger body count than most horror movies at this point. The next night, Claire gets ready to go out for the party, and she passes missing flyers on her way there. That's not enough to make her sway from going to the party, and she meets up with Olivia and her friends who are already well into partying. All of the girls end up having a fun night dancing, drinking, and spending time together, but Claire's world begins to spin as she falls deeper into everything. Eventually, Claire and Olivia get a moment alone, and Olivia spills her heart out to Claire, and Claire reassures her that everything's going to be perfect with the wedding. Olivia says she loves Charlie, but she feels like he doesn't hear her sometimes. Soon, Claire takes herself to the bathroom to try and clean a stain off of her clothes, but some of Olivia's friends make their way in without knowing she's there. They talk about Claire and wonder why Olivia invited such a weird person to the party. Claire is none too happy about what she heard, and she ends up leaving on her own. While she's in the car texting Olivia, she sees the partygoers leaving, and she trails the co-worker all the way to her house where she meets a lover. Claire ends up breaking into the house of the co-worker where she finds the two lovers passed out on the couch. Claire spots pictures of the co-worker and Olivia together, and Claire leaves to go to the bathroom. While she's in there, the co-worker wakes up and comes in to use the bathroom. While Claire hides behind the shower curtain, she keeps absolutely silent until she's able to make a break for the car. The next day, Claire texts Olivia about her wedding, and Olivia responds like she would a normal friend. As Claire leaves work, she spots another missing poster, and a customer spots her staring at it. Claire rushes out and heads home to sleep. The next morning, Claire watches a clip of Olivia talking about drama in her life, and she starts to lose it. How did she find out her jogging trail and why does she have to match the bench? Camouflage? Or is it a fashion crime not to match your stalker park bench? Throughout the rest of the day, nothing else matters except for Olivia. That night, Olivia leaves her office building to find Claire waiting by her car to see if she can help with anything. Olivia gets a little concerned about how Claire knew where she worked. But Claire explains that she remembers every little conversation they ever had. After watching Claire try to be supportive and give her advice on not getting married, Olivia just has enough of Claire trying to be her friend. The next morning, Claire starts to freak out at home, and she even calls Olivia to tell her she needs to talk. When she calls again, Charlie ends up answering and it throws Claire off so much that she fumbles around for the right conversation to talk about. Claire ends up parking outside Olivia's house, and she breaks in to look at everything inside. She makes her way upstairs and she proceeds to try on more of Olivia's clothes in the closet. She checks herself out in the mirror and she looks as though she sees someone else. Claire continues to rummage through Olivia's things and she seems to have a strong connection with her. Suddenly, Claire finds Olivia's little bullet, and Claire's face gets a little more heightened as she gets as close as she can with Olivia's little bullet. Claire actually throws herself onto the bed and goes at it like she doesn't have a care in the world for anyone coming home. Of course, Olivia comes home with a friend from the rehearsal dinner now, go figure. Claire's still in this nighty outfit and she escapes through the bathroom window like a little schoolchild. When Claire gets back home, she reopens her cellar and rushes to take the sheets off of all the furniture down there. After looking at herself in the mirror, she obsesses over her trophies that she had tried to hide all this time. She tries to reenact her old obsessions, but she can't get Olivia's words out of her head. Claire tries it with another trophy, but Olivia's words still ring through her mind. After she throws a tantrum, Claire gets a realization of what she has to do. She heads to her car and goes to one of the friend's houses. Once the friend answers, here we go again, raising those personal best numbers. I feel like it's just going to be whoever and whenever from here on. There's no method to this madness. Naturally, Claire scalps her after she breathes her last breath. She wears the scalp and eats a snack in front of the TV while sitting in front of the lifeless body. She laughs maniacally as she pets the hair on her head, and that's pretty much how she spends her night. The next day in her cellar, Claire goes through some old family photograph books, and she goes to get ready for Olivia's wedding. She compares her reflection to the picture of her mother and she heads out for her morning coffee. Once there, she finds a jar that's asking for donations for the coffee girl's funeral. After Claire looks around, she notices that someone's posting pictures of her suspicious walk on the CCTV, and she rips the poster down as she leaves. Claire makes her way to Olivia's wedding where she runs into Charlie, who she makes promise to take good care of Olivia. Once in the back, Olivia is overjoyed to see her, and Claire sets up shop to handle her hair. Seriously, I never thought I'd see so much sensual hair playing in my life. 
This was advertised as a horror movie, and these scenes are part of what contributes to the horror for me. Claire's an amazing character that handles craziness quite well, but these hair playing scenes are really something else. Once she's done with Olivia's hair, she turns her attention to the little girl in the room, and the wedding prep continues as planned. As the bridal party leaves, Claire finishes up the little girl's hair and heads to the bathroom. She catches sight of Charlie and Olivia being so in love, and she seems to feel better about everything. After putting some finishing touches on Olivia's veil, Olivia apologizes for how she handled the other night, and Claire breaks down into tears. After Olivia asks what's wrong, she's a little surprised by what Claire tells her. As guests sit waiting patiently, everyone gasps as members of the bridal party walk down the aisle. Anticipation ramps up as it gets closer to Olivia walking down the aisle, and finally the moment arrives. As the bride stands in front of Charlie, Charlie raises the veil and reveals his beautiful bride. She looks so genuinely happy that it almost feels like a sin to know that this is a messed up ending. As the entire church clears out and leaves Claire at the altar, she remembers some of Olivia's words as the screen cuts to the credits. This was definitely an interesting one. Different. When I think of hair and horror, this definitely wasn't what I had in mind. So this is a nice little surprise for sure. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next, and I'll see you in the next video.